All right, we're just going to get right started. Hi, everyone. My name is Caitlin Gonzalez. I am the director of campus events here at the Student Alumni Association. Welcome to all of our guests um, and welcome to our panelists for taking time out of their night to join us tonight. Um, I am again, I am a part of the Student Alumni Association and as our organization, our organization uh, aims to foster connections between UVM catamounts past and present. Um, we are so grateful to have this opportunity to come virtually together as students and alumni um, and celebrate Women's History Month with our extraordinary panelists. Um, I want to thank everyone who helped me organize um, this incredible event. Jessica Dudley, Pat Patrick McGuire, um, Katarina Campbell, um, uh, Katie Amendola and Avery Holmes. Yeah, oh, so Caitlin, I'm so happy to join you. Um, so many exciting and sacred people on this panel. And so it's great when you get to be happy about working at seven o'clock um, on uh, whatever day it is this week. So thank you all so much. My name is Katarina, I use they, them, and she, her pronouns, and I'm here on behalf of our Women and Gender Equity Center at the University of Vermont. I serve in the role of program and leadership coordination there. And I'd just like to tell a little story about how our space came to be today. Um, so the Student Alumni Association is a really magical and talented, devoted group of people. Working with them, they're some of the most tenacious and organized students I've ever had the pleasure of working with. And um, it was, I believe, Caitlin was the catalyst um, of an email with pa the amazing Patrick McGuire, who is with the Alumni Association here, um, and our director at the Women and Gender Equity Center, Melissa Murray. And so those three conspired and wanted to do a collaboration. And this collaboration comes at a really significant moment for us at the Wage Center, as we like to be called, um, because we have an anniversary coming up. So the Women and Gender Equity Center is turning 30. Um, which, you know, as we know, this work and these struggles, these liberations have been going on for more than 30 years, but we've had a dedicated place at this university community um, for 30 years coming up in the fall. And so we are planning a big celebration. We hope you'll join us. And then for Women's History Month, we wanted to kind of kick the celebration off early and be with some sacred people. So that's a little story about how we came to be together today. And the one other thing we just wanted to share as we open this space is, um, really a thank you and a note on process. So when, as um, many of us know, language is an ever shifting thing, especially when it comes to our identities and terms that maybe at one time felt good can be weaponized and need to be changed. And so before we begin, we'd really like to acknowledge um, for any of you who may have noticed that we recently actually changed the name of this event. Uh, we are originally marking, marketing it as women with an X. Um, and that was an attempt to be equitable and inclusive in language. However, our beloved community, some really brave and brilliant folks brought it to our attention that the X can be used and can be harmful. Um, while it was originally used by feminist organizations to separate the term like men, M-E-N, from the women, W-O-M-E-N, um, we've learned that it has been co-opted by people who are wishing to exclude trans and non-binary folks from our spaces and our movements. And so when the community brought that to our attention, we realized that that was the opposite of what we wanted the space to be and the place where we wanted to be with each of you. And so we want to say that we're grateful to those who brought this to our attention um, for the opportunity to learn, to change our language, to ensure that it's representative, inclusive, and equitable as much as language can be. Um, because our panel represents some really compassionate, folks across identities and experiences. And so panelists, we want to say thank you so much for being here. Um, and thank you all for allowing us to experience this shift in language and change, change our name. So the last thing I'll say about that is we are going to post something in the chat um, that was gifted to us from the community that helped us learn the history of how the language has shifted. Um, if you want to learn with us. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being open to shifting and creating as loving a space as we can. And yeah, Caitlin, I, I offer it to you. Thank you so much. And thank you again, panelists, for joining us. Um, so we are pleased to be joining um, to, for, oh my gosh, we are pleased to be joined together 
um, with six ex extraordinary UVM alum women, Arialis Ortiz of She, Her of Curly Pops, uh, Brianna Martin, She, Her, who is a family functional therapist and yoga wellness instructor, Chelsea Rappin, She, Her, Hers, who is a physical therapist, Verona Jacobs, she, her, hers, who is, who is um, the global advertising sales executive for Microsoft account at Twitter, and Natalie Bishop, she, her, hers, who is a program officer and evaluation specialist with the CDC Foundation. So thank you and hello everybody. Um, so I think we're just gonna lead right into the first question. If, uh, if Katerina, you wanna ask that away. Oh, I do, Caitlin. I do. I'm so excited. So this was one of the first questions that folks came up with because we were really eager to hear what this group of folks would, would share. So um, this for this um, question, we really just want each of you to have an opportunity to enter the room and for people to learn a little bit about your stories. So we aren't, unfortunately, as brilliant and fascinating as you all are. We aren't going to be able to have everyone answer every question, but we are able to have everyone answer this question so that people can connect and learn a little bit about you. Um, we offer, you know, time can be challenging, um, but we offer you maybe five-ish minutes, if that feels good to you, to try to address this. Um, because we're eager to hear what you have to say. So without further ado, the question is, um, we would love if you could share a story with us that helps you understand how you got to where you are today. Um, so it's it's vague on purpose. I'll, I'll repeat it again. Um, we would love if you could share a story with us that helps us understand how you got to where you are today. Um, and we know that everyone processes differently. Some people need some time to like reflect or make notes. Some people think as they're talking. So we just invite you all to kind of go with your own processing style. Um, if we need to, we can call on people if that makes people feel more comfortable, but we'll take a minute to see if kind of a flow naturally emerges for us. I can go first. <laughs> um, so the question was how, like, how did this all start? Like, you can totally, you can take the question anywhere you want. That a, a story of some form that helps us yeah. help understand how you got to where you are today. Yeah. Um, I was so, I, when I received like some questions before, cause I'm the type of person that like, kind of likes to think about it a little bit, think about the question before. I answer um, and it usually like takes me a while. Um, but I was just thinking about um, for me, the way you know I started getting into where I am today, which is owning a plant-based popsicle business here in Vermont, um, started with um, family and the table and being around um, people that I could connect with. Um, I realized like at a young age that was um, what sparked joy in my life was being around my aunts or being around my grandparents and there was always a meal being cooked or um, I always had a friend over and we were eating a snack and it seemed like um, food and community and just being around people um, feeling a part of something is what kind of led me to where I am because that's kind of like how I go through life is um, with my heart. Um, so figuring that out, what my passion was and what was most important to me kind of led me to wanting to discover food and discover, um, you know, nutrition, which was my background at UVM. Um, and then from there, you know, learning about food systems and, you know, trying to connect people to healthy foods is kind of the result of where I am today. Uh, that's kind of what my story is. Um, I'm not really a public speaker. I like to kind of just like say what I'm feeling. Um, I'm very informal, but that's kind of what I have to share about that. But only, um, being a part of the community and feeling connected to something is what led me to where I am today. And yeah. What a gorgeous way to open up the space. Yes. Thank you so okay. much. 
from family. Thank you so much. Yeah. So whoever else feels called, we'd love for you to share your stories. I can go. I'll jump in. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Betsy. Uh, I work at Twitter um, in global sales um, for the Microsoft Advertiser account. Um, I, my kind of background, I think, is um, it's interesting in that I graduated in 2008. Um, and most of you on the call probably don't know this. But in 2008, we were going through a financial collapse, basically, in the country. Um, and a lot of corporate entities all over the country weren't hiring. Um, and I was trying to get into marketing and advertising. So I graduated from the business school. I had internships. Um, I kind of thought I would just get a job in a city and that would be it. Um, and it was the complete opposite. It was horrible. It was really stressful. You graduate from college and you sort of think, okay, I'm going to have a job lined up. A lot of my friends did. And I didn't at all. Um, I think I went on literally 35 interviews um, over a period of about eight to 10 months. Um, and I just couldn't get a job. I kept being told I did a great job and just somebody else fit the bill or the company was doing layoffs or restructures. And it was really stressful and really challenging. You graduate college, you have all the student debt and you're like, here I am. How do I get started in what I thought I was preparing for? Um, so my first year and a half after school, I waited tables um, and I worked at a clothing store and I babysat. Um, so I worked three jobs for a year and a half um, until I could, and I kept interviewing and I kept persisting and it was pretty discouraging, but um, I finally landed a job about a year and a half after graduating um, in advertising in the city where a fellow UVM alumni and friend of mine from school had a job. Her company was hiring. She was working at Martha Stewart, living on the media. Martha Stewart had a big media company at the time. Uh, that no longer existed, but, um, and there was an opening on her team, entry level, I didn't even care what it was, I said, just throw my resume in, um, and I got an interview, and I basically begged them for the job, um, and, and I got it, so um, I think my key takeaway that I really like to tell students that I speak to is, just don't give up and don't get discouraged. Um, you really never know what's going to happen. And it was a really stressful year, but it really, I feel like brought me to where I am today, where I've really created strong, I think I've created a really strong work ethic where I'm extra motivated to go that extra, extra mile, I guess, um, from there. So within that, I, I've moved around the industry. I've basically always been in advertising sales, um, in, in media companies and um, working my kind of way up the ladder. Um, and then Actually, the job before I came to Twitter, I was laid off um, and my company had layoffs and I was let go. And that was, again, it was a really tough moment. Um, but I ended up taking a few months to myself and experiencing nature and going for walks and meditating and kind of coming back to myself. And then Twitter reached out to me and I've been there for six years ever since. Um, and I absolutely love it. And I've, I've moved my way up there. So that's sort of background on how I came to be where I am now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, this is so great. Yeah, we welcome that. We welcome these stories so much. Is anyone feeling called to share your story next? I can go next. Can can folks hear me? Awesome. So I'm grateful to be in the space with the season chosen fam. Um, I'm Brianna. You she her pronouns. And I would say my journey has been a journey of opportunity and I would say healing. Um, I'm first gen, I'm from the Bronx, and um, I showed up at UVM because I got a full ride. Um, I had won a scholarship and then got scholarships at UVM, and it was able to be like the first of my family to go to UVM. And when I was there, I was a social work major. And um, I think being at UVM, I really had a lot of amazing mentors who showed me like the fields of higher education. So even though I was like a social work student and I was like an RA, I got to really see that there could be people who could support you while you were in higher ed and that that was an opportunity that I wouldn't have been exposed to had I not been there. Um, and that really encouraged me to, to go into higher ed myself. So I ended up, you know, getting my master's in student affairs and I came right back to UVM. And I served in a program that I was a student in, um, TRIO Student Support Services, that is no longer at UVM, unfortunately, but had been there for 
40 plus years um, and he was like serving other first generation college students, students from living income backgrounds and students with different abilities. Um, and I did that for six And what I love about higher ed is like that same energy opportunities. Like it really opened a lot of doors, you know, for me. And I was able to, to give back and do that same thing through the program and through connection. Um, and I always wanted to do a Fulbright when I was a student. And that was like an opportunity that you know ended up coming it, it wasn't when I was under an undergrad student but I got to do that as a staff member um, and through that I built on my work with social work um, and I think I really was in, inspired to bring on that mental health piece because um, I was like working with students like through like programming and providing financial support and social support but really saw a need for like mental health support um, and really received that for myself when I was at UVM as well, um, and wellness work, right? So like yoga and mindfulness practice, which I think you mentioned um, earlier. Um, someone here mentioned that. Uh, so yeah, I think that like opened doors and, and, and really was healing for me and really opened those doors for me to be in those spaces as well. Um, so I got my MSW and with the pandemic and life, there was like so many like life changes um, I returned back home to the Bronx. I'm back home in New York City now. Um, and I am a therapist now. So it was just like, like my journey has been like opportunity healing. Like doors have opened, healing opportunities have opened, and then I have been able to be in those same spaces, and, you know, be that space and, and do that in return as well. So just really grateful for the journey. It wasn't planned. You know, like I was like, I'm gonna do this, and then like life will just guide you. You know, so I would say that was has been my journey. Thank you so much, Brianna. Thank you so much. Um, who's feeling called to share your story next? They're all so beautiful. We're so grateful you're here. Hi, you next. I'm always too slow to to unmute my button. Someone else jumps in. But hi everyone, um, my name is Natalie Bishop and I graduated from UVM in 2012. Um, so I can't believe it's already been like almost 10 years now, it's kind of crazy. Um, but I guess, let's see where my journey, where I'd like to start telling about my journey is maybe at the end of my UVM experience. So maybe there's some like graduating seniors or like approaching graduating seniors out there and I think maybe similar to like what Betsy was saying was, you know, I was trying to figure out exactly what I wanted to do after graduation. I didn't have a job lined up right away. I was applying to lots of different things. Um, and I'd really had my hopes set on this one fellowship experience um, in New York City and had made it really far in the interview process. And I was like, yes, this is what I'm doing. And then of course made it to the final round and like didn't get the, the opportunity. And so um, after I graduated, kind of did like a piecemeal of different jobs and I, you know, helped some professors with some research studies and um, also had some time on my hands that I ended up studying for the GRE because I knew that I wanted to go to grad school at some point and I thought, you know, this is something that I can do now and take advantage of now while kind of things are still fresh in my mind after graduating and so um, I ended up then taking the GRE exam and I, I'm not sure if this is still the case, but I think, you know, maybe some, some words of advice if people are, are interested in looking um, and going to grad school, like the, the requirements when I, when I went were that, you know, the, once you take the exam, the exam is good for five years. So something to consider if you're, you're thinking that, that you want to go to grad school one day, um, to, to think about kind of the timing with that. But um, after the summer I spent in Burlington after I graduated, I ended up doing a year of AmeriCorps, which was like a really great experience. And I also, you know, encourage any of you who are interested in AmeriCorps to apply because it's really a hands-on learning experience. Um, and so I was grateful that I got to go back to my hometown of Milwaukee, Wisconsin and really serve the community there. So um, I was working um, in, a, in a health center there, working with Latino population, 
um, with youth and families um, and an obesity prevention program. And I think that really um, kind of sparked my interest even further in, in public health. It was something that I was always interested in, but didn't necessarily knew that's the degree I wanted to get. Um, and so I really loved, you know, working one-on-one -on -one with families and having that kind of individual focus, but I think I wanted something more and maybe something more like how can I affect change at the population level? And so I ended up pursuing my master's of public health. And from there, yeah, things kind of just one thing led to another. I went to Emory, which was in Atlanta and ended up having some opportunities at the CDC and some interns. And once I graduated, I had a really amazing um, opportunity to, to be an evaluation fellow at the CDC. So I, I learned a lot there. It was focused on evaluation work and something that I'm really passionate about is, you know, improving programs and, and helping um, kind of improve change through, through programmatic work. So that experience has now led me to my current position, which is now not the CDC, but I'm at the CDC Foundation, and I'm working mainly in global tobacco control, but also working still in some evaluation work as well um, across the entire foundation. So that is my journey, yeah. Thank you so much, Natalie. What journeys, you all, what journeys, oh my gosh. So yeah, who's, who's feeling moved to, to share next? I can go next. Can you hear me okay? Awesome. Hi everyone. So Veronica or V again, she, her pronouns. Um, when I think about like my journey and what has brought me to where I am today, I think a lot about um, mentors that I've had that have been mirrors for myself um, and really reflecting things about me that I may not necessarily have seen on my own. Um, and many of those mentors have been women of color. So um, I, I can first recall a counselor I had in undergrad. I was also in um, a student support services program, um, TRIO alum, very grateful for that program. And um, I was a nursing major and just really unhappy in the sciences and um, super involved on campus. And, you know, a mentor said, you know, you can do this as a career. You can support students. You can be a resource for them um, as a, you can get paid to do this. And so really putting all of my efforts from that my first year in undergrad towards that. Um, and I have a little bit of a different journey than some other folks on the panel. I'm not um, an undergraduate alum of the University of Vermont. I am actually a graduate alum, so um, I went to a master's program at the University of Vermont for higher education and student affairs, where I learned all about college student development, um, similar to the program that Brianna shared about, um, and really learned how to support college students. Um, and so I'm, I'm super grateful for all of the women of color, some at UVM when I did an internship there, some at the University of Connecticut, my alma mater. Um, that really helped me to see that my passion um, was in helping others recognize their brilliance, importance, and worth. And I'm just fortunate to have been able to do that in a college academic setting. Um, so I'm, I, I spent, uh, you know, my four years in undergrad at UConn, and then I went directly into graduate school at the University of Vermont. I chose um, to attend UVM because I did an internship there the summer prior to applying and just met some really amazing people. Um, and wanted to continue to foster those relationships. And I know they say you shouldn't go some, go places because of people, because people leave, but that is what brought me to UVM um, and also what, what inspired me to stay. When I graduated my program, I, I stayed at UVM and worked um, and then ultimately decided I want to go back to Connecticut so I could be a little bit closer to family. So I spent some time working in orientation at UVM and then I left um, in the summer of 2019 to go back to UConn and I'm now, I went as a coordinator of leadership programs to so doing lots of, facilitating lots of workshops around leadership development um, and was recently re promoted to a associate director position, which is super awesome. It's in, an, on a temporary basis, but I'm so grateful for the opportunity uh, to have a little bit more power and create change in supporting students, um, particularly students who hold various marginalized identities and just being a black woman um, at, with a seat at a table has been really meaningful for me. Um, so I'm really grateful for my journey and I don't know if higher ed is my forever, but the skill sets that it has provided, has provided me has 
um, you know, allowed me to do a lot of other things in my own life, um, like starting the wellness brand I talked about called the Sunrise Creative. So I'm um, super grateful for my journey. And I think just being open um, to different opportunities and, and willing to, um, you know, connect with folks is, is really awesome. And oh, I yes, uh, pa I see Patrick shared in the chat that um, they were involved in UVM orientation. I have heard your name multiple times. So, yep, you just missed me. <laughs> yes, the, the orientation family at UVM is super strong. So I'm grateful to be a part of it. Thank you so much and welcome back, back. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Thank you so much. And I believe, um, Chelsea, are you feeling like you're open to sharing a little bit of your story? Of course. So my story is a little different. I all throughout middle school and high school, I wanted to be a physical therapist based on my mom getting multiple back and neck surgeries and having positive experiences from physical therapy, taking her, um, being present during the physical therapy sessions. Um, so I knew going into school that that's what I wanted to do. I also played ice hockey pretty competitively and uh, I was looking to get a scholarship and play as well. UVM was one of the only schools that had an accelerated program, so three years of undergrad and three years of grad work. Um, it's a doctorate to become a physical therapist, so I was able to get a scholarship and pay for my first four years of schooling and then only had to pay for two out of my own pocket. Um, but being at the University of Vermont was an amazing experience with all the clinical internships that I was able to do here in Vermont. I grew to love Vermont and ended up going to um, the University of Vermont for one of my clinicals in, in the place that I'm currently working now for a 10 week uh, clinical experience. Um, after I graduated, I worked at a small private practice locally um, only for just about a year and then ended up taking a job over at the University of Vermont because I wanted to teach. So now I'm kind of a little part time adjunct um, professor here at UVM. Um, I specialize in pediatrics, physical therapy, so I participate in some of the, the classes as a TA, um, which I knew that I had always wanted to do growing fo going forward. Um, but also my part-time job, I've been able to use my hockey skills that I got from UVM, and I'm now a collegiate and international ice hockey referee. Um, so I was just at the Frozen Four last weekend. Um, so UVM's done some amazing things to get me where I've got, uh, where I am now and where I'm going hopefully to be. Um, my goal is to hopefully go to the Olympics and work the Olympics as a referee there. Thank you so much. Y'all keep it interesting. Uh, and just to kind of support my own tech shortcomings, I believe everyone has entered into the space. Everyone shared an aspect of the story, correct? Caitlin, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you all so much. So um, I'm also blessed to get to ask the second question. So this one, um, we just couldn't resist asking you all. Um, again, if, if this sings to you, we ask that you please share with us, recognizing that we, not everyone is going to perhaps answer this question. So what we want to know is what surprised you about your journey? You know, you all shared, some of you like knew you wanted, for instance, you know, Chelsea, knowing that you want to do physical therapy um, and going through your journey. I'm sure there were tons of surprises in there too. Um, but we really want to know when you hear that question, does one of you, do some of you think, oh, wow, there was a big surprise around this journey um, that you want to share. We're, we'll give people some time to process if you need to. So it's okay if there's a moment of silence, but um, we want to welcome you to share. Yeah, what surprised you? I can, I can go. Because um, it has definitely been quite a surprising journey <laughs> the last uh, year and a half. And I think with everything that we all are going through as well, um, but I, I think I'd, I'd say I was surprised that, you know, I would be serving in, in like a mental health role, like as a therapist so soon, right, right after my program and that I would be doing this work at back home, you know, in New York city, um, and even the population, you know, like, <laughs> it's just like, life is funny, 
But um, initially going into this work, I wanted to support like women and women of color and had did like retreat um, in different places where we did like workshops and yoga and wellness. And now majority of my population is men. Um, and in Montreal, I work with men who were like in the context of like intimate partner violence, um, domestic violence, and being in one-on-one -on -one therapy and group therapy with them was really eye-opening. Um, and really shifted my perspective to be like, you know, men need this work too. And there's a lot of, you know, gender norms and societal constructs that really prevent men, I think, from being fully like vulnerable or expressing themselves in different ways. Um, so that was like an eye opener. And like the work that I do now is also predominantly with men um, ages 18 to 25. Um, so it's just been very, very interesting. It's like, you know, I was like, I want to, you know, be for, you know, my folks and, and people I share identities with. And I think like my journey has shown me that, you know, it's, it has expanded, um, you know, who really needs like this healing, who really needs this work and how I can be like a vessel and an instrument to that. Um, so yeah, it's been, and then even in New York city, like I, being in Vermont really grounded me and really was like a healing space. Like I'm never going back to New York City. Like people just, you know, it's so expensive. The energy is so fast paced and here I am, you know, so <laughs> it's been really interesting. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's a, lots of surprises there for sure. Thank you so much, Brie. Thank you so much, Brianna. Who else felt surprised? What other surprises can we kind of throw in the mix here? I can share. I um something that I've been kind of surprised at is how I am returning back to like my inner child desires and like the things as a kid I intuitively like wanted to do. So when I was a little girl, I grew up in the church um, and I like was really fascinated by my uncle who was the pastor and my mom who would preach sometimes. And I was really confident that when I grew up, I would be a preacher. Um, and then that kind of like just went away, um, because I was told by different adults that like, yeah, you might not want to do that or, um, not necessarily a secure path. And then I really wanted to become a teacher because I love school. And that desire ended up getting thrown away as well because it's like teachers don't make any money and, um, you know, we make everything about money in this world because capitalism, et cetera. Um, and so I eventually found my path to higher ed as I shared, but now as I've been in the field for like four to five years, I'm finding myself returning back to those inner child um, desires, which I find really surprising. And, and sometimes I wonder in which ways as society and parents and just all of our mentors kind of can sometimes steer us away from intuitively what we know we're supposed to be doing. And so, um, yeah, like just having opportunities to teach through my role as higher ed, even when I was in Vermont, I had the opportunity to um, teach college students at the Community College of Vermont, which was really amazing. And like now I teach um, mindfulness sessions, like which is completely separate from my work. Um, and so that's really cool. And then um, I also recently became an ordained minister and I'm going to have the opportunity to officiate a, a family wedding and one of my friend's weddings, which is like not directly doing pastor or preaching work, but it kind of connects back to that. Um, and so, yeah, I just find it really su surprising and fascinating um, how I'm returning back to like my inner child desires, even though I've been steered away from it for some time. Wow, what an offering to all. We were all children once, right? So thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I also wanted to say, I know some people are putting questions in the chat, which is amazing because we are going to open up the floor for Q&A later because these folks are just too fascinating for us to not let everyone get their questions in. Um, so thank you so much. Thank you so much, um, Veronica, for sharing, V for sharing. And we have a little more time for this question. So I'm curious if anyone else felt surprised or is feeling open to, to share. I'll go. Um, so I think something that was surprising to me is that your path may not be linear, like, and, and it might be, and that's great too. But I think like for a lot of us, just like in hearing our stories, like one opportunity leads to the next, or you network with someone and that leads to, um, you know, another opportunity. But I think for me, like I had no idea that I would end up 
like either at the CDC or working at the CDC foundation. Like I lived in Atlanta, like, which was really weird for a little bit, <laughs> but I ended up loving Atlanta. Um, but yeah, never thought I would live like in the South. Um, but yeah, I think just, I was really lucky to have lots of different opportunities. Or soon, to, I guess it was like at that point, he wasn't my husband, but like little did I know he was going to be my husband. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think just like taking all those, all those nuggets and like those opportunities and like you don't know exactly where you're going to end up, but they all kind of piece together and they all kind of help to, to tell your story and, and where you do want to end up. And I think they're, they're really meant to be like learning opportunities. And, you know, sometimes you might take a position and it might not be a good fit. You might hate it, but um, it's okay to backtrack and like go down another path. So I think for me, that's, that's what I, maybe surprising to me. No, what a beautiful offering. Thank you so much. I will say my internet is sawing a little bit, Caitlin. So if I drop off a little, I, I trust you, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. Um, beautiful <laughs> folks, we have time for one more person to share. Um, we do have tons of questions for you all because um, we're really eager to listen. Um, but do, was there one more of you maybe who was feeling a little surprised and maybe wants to throw something in the mix? I can go. Um, so, so I don't, I didn't really explain too much about my business because I was like the first question I was, I went straight to like the child memory that kind of like stuck with me till this moment. Um, but I studied at UVM and I studied um, nutrition and food science. I got my bachelor's there and I was kind of under the impression that I would get, I would um, want to do, be a dietitian, um, continue my education. Um, but school, uh, being at university was like really hard for me. Um, I was just like a different learner and it was like a really stressful like experience for me um but i made it through it and i really love the nutrition program um nutrition food science at uvm i feel like i learned so much about food um and food systems um that's really important to know to give us knowledge to other people in the community um so after i graduated i kind of like was doing odd jobs working at restaurants babysitting um trying to figure out like how I was going to use my degree. Um, I even applied like for nutrition jobs and like was unsuccessful. Um, so I kind of felt like I needed to do something. Um, so there was this whole summer where I was just like in the kitchen um, cooking all sorts of things. Um, I'm really into like making smoothies. Um, because one of the things that I learned in nutrition was like eating the rainbow is like the best for you. Um, so from there, I kind of like experimenting in the kitchen kind of led to led to me, led my curiosity to like, what does it take to open a business? Um, and then from there, it kind of turned into what is it that I want to bring to the community? Um, and basically, as simple as it is, it's just um, fruit-based popsicles. So basically fruit and vegetable in a smoothie with maple syrup, really simple and delicious and delightful and nutrient dense um, that any age group would enjoy. Um, so I kind of just like stuck with that kind of simplicity and um, went step by step and figured out, okay, this is what I have to do to get there and then go step by step. Um, and then I never thought that I would continue and be so persistent um, with my business and trying to grow it and it being where it is today, where a lot of the community is familiar with my product and a lot of the Vermont community has like embraced um, my brand. So that is unexpected because I wasn't expecting that blessing, but um, it just kind of shows too also going with your gut is really important um, 
and doing what you love is the most important. Uh, so that's what that's my share. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so much. So grateful for each of you. Um, and uh, Caitlin, now your turn to ask some questions. Yes, all of these stories are just so inspiring, just so inspiring to hear, you know, these extraordinary women It, you know, I'm, I'm just building my story. So, um, so it's, it's definitely powerful to hear. Um, so one question that we had was, how did your gender influence your path during your time at UVM and after? Um, and again, we'll just pause um, so you can think about that and I'll Repeat, how did your gender influence your path during your time at UVM and after? I'm happy to start. Um, if that's okay, can you guys hear me okay? Sorry, my cat keeps jumping up here, so sorry. <laughs> um, so when I was at UVM, I was in the business school and it was very male, focused in the business school. Um, and at the time, to be honest with you, I, it, at the time during college, I didn't really realize it as much. I knew the business school was very male focused, but I, I kind of just pushed it aside. And I would say after college, being in the workforce and being in New York City and, and being in this corporate world, it was very eye opening to see things, um, to, to be blunt. It's, it can be tough as a woman in, I don't even work in finance. And I would argue that if you work in finance, that is a very, very male dominant um, experience. And I think especially in the last couple of years, there's just been so much that's come to light with Me Too and, and just all these these um, experiences of women in the workplace and, and how men dominate. Um, and so I've been lucky in that I haven't had um, very many negative experiences, but I I have had experiences where a male colleague was um, promoted over me when I was more qualified. Um, and I, I've seen sexual harassment and discrimination it happen firsthand to friends of mine. And, and that that was really eye-opening to sort of say, wow, I feel like an adult. And I know that sounds weird to say, but it's just, it's one of those things you hear growing up. And then when it actually happens and you see it in your early 20s and mid 20s, it's, it was really interesting to, to surface. Um, and I will say also, though, it's really gender equality and um, everything that falls under that. It's, it's really made kind of what Ariel was saying about like following your gut and your passion. Like it really showed me how I worked at certain companies that were horrible to women. And it made me miserable and not like it. And I left the company for that reason. And it's been eye-opening working at Twitter that is a complete polar opposite. We have an entire, we have an entire department of inclusion and diversity that's focused on making sure we hire across any every single, you know, race and not talking about, you know, it, we always ask, what are your pronouns? Things like that. And being in a company like that that puts that first has been so incredible. And, and frankly, eye-opening. And I look back on some companies and jobs I had, and I'm like, what was I thinking? Like, it is just amazing the 180 of certain companies that are really progressive in that and, and really um, embrace your gender and, and women's rights and women's equality. So um, if that sort of answers the question, but it's it's been very interesting, I'd say, over the past 15 years to see that all come full circle and uh, especially especially in the past couple of years to work at a company like Twitter has been very interesting in, in that. That's incredible. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, yeah. if someone else um, would like to share, that'd be great if they feel comfortable enough. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I feel like I was almost had the opposite where I was in physical therapy and most of my colleagues just happened to be female. Um, and then I played on the women's ice hockey team. So moving forward, being a PT, it's kind of half and half where I work, which is very untypical. Um, so as a physical therapy, I feel like it's very even, but as I go to the refereeing, the ice hockey refereeing, it's completely different. So being an ice hockey referee here in Vermont um, for high school, there's only three or four other women who referee 
And then when you go to the collegiate level, it's even different. It's like maybe 10 to 250 officials in just Division One that are female. So it's very, very swayed, male-dominated, um, working women's college ice hockey games. Um, the amazing thing is, is international is all female. You Female win, work females games so that is a very different international standard that they want to promote where they want females on the ice doing female level games i can't say the same for college hockey so i think gender has it has been very eye-opening um being outside of college how much it does affect um you going forward in your future with certain professions, for sure. Thank you so much for sharing, Chelsea. Um, if anybody else feels comfortable um, and willing to share, um, I'll open it up again. All right, um, so we are just going to move on to the next question. A student asked, um, what was your favorite UVM experience? Or maybe do you have any key takeaways from UVM while here? I can go. So I think this kind of builds on that question um, that was asked about gender. And I think it, it's hard for me to separate myself and think about gender. I often think about my identities like intersectionally. Um, and as much as I'm not in Vermont right now, UVM, I think UVM was just such a magical place in terms of build, bringing community together. You know, like some of my like closest friends is like, I met them there at UVM. You know, so I think that is like the favorite thing, you know, it's like who would have thought like, you know, Bronx native goes to UVM and like some of my closest, most like inspiring connections, like mentors, like friends, sisters, you know, have all been like cultivated from that network. Um, and I just feel really, you know, grateful, like wherever I've gone in the world, like my, my day ones. <laughs> It's from UVM. So I'm just, I think that is something that just stands out, you know. Um, yeah, and I'll just mute myself. <laughs> Thank you so much, Brianna. I, I have met one, some of my closest friends here as well. Um, just the people here are just incredible. So um, I will open it back up again. I can go. Um, so I, my time at UVM was, it was fun. I I feel like what I, what I took away the most from it was definitely the friendships that I made there. Um, a lot of really open-minded people. Um, what else? And also the UVM basketball team was really fun to watch before COVID. Um, I always kind of like the speed, the athletic spirit going to see um, athletic games like that. Um, what else? Yeah, I feel like, I don't know, there's, a, there's just, there's a lot that there, I feel like the most fun thing too was being able to run. Um, there's like so many places to run with friends down at the waterfront was like my favorite thing to do. Um, it kind of promotes physical activity, which is awesome. And the outdoors is really great um, for your mental health as well, which I totally took advantage of. Um, those are my takeaways. Thank you so much, Arielis. Yeah, um, sports games pre-COVID were probably the best to be at, um, especially hockey games. I've been to quite a few and they are the best like energy um, that people give off there. Um, so thank you. Um, and I'm gonna open it back up if anybody else wants to share um, a fun memory. Um, 
I'll go. Um, so before coming to UVM, I was a big dancer and I didn't necessarily think I wanted to be on like the modern dance. I was like, I don't know, like that's, I want to like do something else, like try something new. And I remember at like orientation with all the, the tables set out, there was the Salsa and Swing Society and I had never done any sort of like partner dancing before. And I was like, oh, this like sounds interesting. And so like I went, I remember going to the first class and there was like, you know, the gym was like packed and everyone was in there. Everyone, all these like excited freshmen and <laughs> everyone and all these seniors teaching, um, teaching us. And I like after that I was hooked and I like was on the board and I like started like taking lessons downtown and like going out like on the weekends and I mean that has still stuck with me and like I still like go out dance I mean well not anymore obviously because of COVID but before <laughs> could could do that and like I think that's still you know social dancing and be able to like to do that it's something that I still really enjoy and something that I wouldn't have probably done if I wouldn't have have taken that opportunity at UVM which is kind of funny because when people ask like oh like where did you learn to dance and I was like oh University of Vermont I'm like wait what like how <laughs> this doesn't make any sense um, yeah I think like just some of those clubs and like extracurricular activities like I really enjoyed being a part of as well along with the friendships <laughs> All of these stories are just incredible. I feel like we all have similar UVM experiences where just the people just make our experience worthwhile. Um, so we have, I think, one more, um, we have time for one more person if they would feel comfortable um, to answer. Um, so I'll open up one last time. I can share. I um, I mean, I echo what a lot of folks shared. Um, it's definitely the people. So, so many amazing people. And I feel similar, similarly, similarly to Brianna, where it's really difficult for me to separate my identity as a woman from being being a black woman, being a woman of color. Um, and so some of my favorite experiences at UVM have been spaces where I've been able to cultivate community with other women of color. Um, so whether that's attending the Women of Color Leadership Retreat, um, either as a participant or on, serving on the committee to create help create that community, um, you know, hosting like Feed Your Soul. Like I, I can remember a Feed Your Soul event where me, um, um, and a woman named Farine Paris Meyer, who's an awesome soul in the Vermont community. And she, we like spent a day like cooking for students of color um, to enjoy home cooked food. And like I got paid that day to like cook food for, for students, which was really amazing. And then just got to watch them enjoy it. And so, um, all of those moments like of just like building community and just family and like breaking bread with folks um like I, I think about the mosaic center for students of color like friday breakfast like those are some of my favorite moments for sure thank you so much veronica yeah i mean these stories are just absolutely incredible thank you again for the panelists for being here. Um, I do see that there are other uh, student questions in the chat and we will get to those um, at the Q&A portion as well. Um, but I think we want to lead into the next question, um, which I am actually very interested in finding out who or what has inspired you in your life um, or in your journey or anything. Um, so again, who or what has inspired you in your life? And I'll open it up. I'll go first. Um, it's probably cliche. I feel like a lot of people will say this, but uh, my mom, definitely. Um, she never went to college and she worked her butt off when I was growing up. Um, and she unfortunately passed away last year. Um, and she had a form of early, it was very tragic. She had a form of early onset dementia, um, at diagnosed at 58. So from an inspiration perspective, I think what's the craziest thing, and my dad said it best at her eulogy, she 
never complained. She never was sad. She never, you know, she always had a smile on her face and she had this incredible perseverance and like positivity in the face of, you know, horrible battle. Um, so for me, that's been so inspirational to just like always stay positive, especially when you have a bad day and you're like, oh my God, this is awful. It's like taking a step back and realizing like there's a much bigger world out there than just work, school, you know, like family and friends are so important and just having that perseverance. And I, I like to think that her positivity and her like continued momentum is kind of what helped me in my career too with getting through everything. So. Thank you so much for sharing, Betsy. That's that's amazing. Um, and I'll open it up again if anybody else is comfortable um, answering. I can go. Um, someone who inspired me is definitely my grandmother. Um, she raised me when I was just growing up as a little girl because my parents both worked um, full time, like all the time. And I was also an only child. Um, so yeah, just my grandma, man. I'll do it for my grandma because she, she, she came here from Puerto Rico, and I think she graduated high school, but she uh, didn't go to college or anything like that. Um, so it just uh, motivated me to just try to get my own education and gain more knowledge, um, and then pave my own way. Um, because I'm sure she had dreams too, but it was just a different time and um, opportunities weren't always there. Um, so she definitely inspires me to persevere and to keep going and just also enjoy it along the way too. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that, Arielis, as well. Um, and I will open it up again if anybody else wants to share. Hello. <laughs> Keeping it with the family theme that we seem to have going, um, but maybe the other end of the spectrum, so not a grandma, but my nephew is actually a person that really inspires me. I mean, he... He's only a year and a half, <laughs> um, but I feel like in, you know, the sh relatively short time that, that I've been able to know, get to know him and be with him, I think, you know, children are just like inspirational to me and just seeing the world through their eyes and, you know, they're learning every day and they're so curious and they're so innocent, I think brings a lot of joy to my life. And so... Yeah, anytime that I'm having a stressful day at work or I'm, you know, not feeling the best mood, I feel like, and even just like looking at pictures of my nephew or like FaceTiming him, he he inspires me to to do better in the world and to to create a world that's better for another generation. So, yeah. Uh, thank you so much again. Uh, thank you, Natalie, um, for sharing. Um, we do have more time uh, for more um, uh, people to share. Um, so I will open it up again um, if you are comfortable. I can share just because I really resonate with that, Natalie. I have a, one, a son who just turned one years old, and he is definitely my primary source of inspiration right now. Um, and I'm as much as I acknowledge the grief and pain and challenges that the pandemic has brought on, I'm also um, in balance and very grateful for the opportunity it has presented for me to literally pretty much like spend my son's first year of life with him, like getting to watch him grow, like seeing all of the things um, from walking to saying his first word to learning how to eat to just like now he likes to mock me and his dad and just like really learn how to do stuff. And it's just it's really amazing watching humans grow. 
um, and also just really being mindful of the way I take up space in the world because I know that he's observing. Um, and so, yeah, and just to just share all of the things that I love um, with him is just like super exciting. Like even just like, you know, I'm doing my yoga poses and like watching him kind of like mock me. And it's the fun, the, the funnest thing ever to see um, kids do yoga poses, especially since some of them are like modeled after, you know, poses that they do naturally. So it's super, super amazing. And then another um, source of inspiration, I would say a little bit different from like an individual or family um, is I would say like, writing and poetry like I'm a I'm a huge reader and I I do identify as a poet and there are a lot of um writers that I feel like I find a lot of inspiration from just reading their work um and hearing their stories in written form is definitely a source of connection for me um and lastly I would just say spirit um I think just connecting with source through meditation um through prayer through yoga all of that um, is definitely a space of, of inspiration. Thank you so much, Veronica, for sharing. Um, and I will open it up um, again. I, I can go. I can share a little. Um, I would say that the most inspiring thing really has just been like the journey itself. You know, in a lot of ways, it does feel like poetry. You know, there's um, uh, a quote that the places, I'm, I'm messing it up, but basically it's like our wounds are the places where the light shines like the brightest. And I really feel like my whole like entire healing journey has been reflected back professionally, you know, like even just like my upbringing and then like working on folks in their upbringing and their healing journey and um you know, opportunities that have opened doors, like some of the things that you share, Veronica, like teaching and wellness and poetry. And like, it's just been really fun and cool to see like how the path has just like been taking me um, and just like with community and yeah, I can go on and on, but I, I think the, the journey has definitely been inspiring for sure, just because, you know, sometimes we could be so unsure about like what we want to do and then sometimes it's like things will just like guide you, you know? And I think that is kind of what you were saying too about like source, Veronica, like just like this divine intervention in my path, you know? Cause I think when I first came to UVM, you know, everyone was trying to figure out what they want to do. And like, I was like an ISSP. And then like someone was like, I think you would like social work. And then I like picked social work, took my first class with Celia Cuddy. And like, I fell in love, you know, and even though I was in social work, like, you know, someone had shared before, like the path is never, it's not, sometimes it's not linear, you know, and it led me through higher ed and then back to social work. And then, so it's just been, I, I would say for those who are listening, like students, like sometimes I think we want to control things, but just having a space for like openness and curiosity and things to like surprise you because you really never know. And then hindsight will be 2020 and you're like, what? That's so cool that like maybe that fell into place, you know? So just having some curiosity and openness in your path and journey, I would say. Thank you so much for sharing, Brianna. That was beautiful. Um, and Chelsea, um, I'm going to open up to you if you are comfortable with sharing who has it, who or what has inspired you in your life. Absolutely. Um, I definitely have to say my mom. She is one of the reasons why I got into physical therapy. And my dad um, has inspired me, just his patience um, in the whole process with my mom, with all the surgeries. Um, it really, I think, makes me the physical therapist that I am, being able to have both sides of the spectrum, seeing how much it does help my patients, and then being able to patient, have patience to be dealing with what's going on with my patients. But I think one of the biggest things that inspires me day to day are my patients and their their healing process, um, their grieving process, their the challenges that they might go through or the success that they might go through um, really inspires me to do my job on a daily basis. And, you know, some days are really, really tough. You go you come back home and you're like, I don't think I made a single person better. <laughs> And then other days you come back home and you're like, 
I discharge three people. They're doing exactly what they want. They know exactly what they need to do. And it, it really does inspire you to go to work every single day and see the change that population, even now during a pandemic, things change, things get better. Um, so I think they're, they're an, an inspiration to, as, an, as a whole, every patient I see. Thank you so much for sharing, Chelsea, and thank you all for sharing um, um, what has inspired you in your life. Um, I'm going to pass it along back to uh, Katerina, um, and uh, yeah, I'll have her take it away. Thank you. Yeah, you're, um, Caitlin, you're actually passing to Katerina and Theo. This is my 20-pound cat who I was wondering if she was going to make an appearance today, and she wants to co-facilitate with us. So, um, this is we're so excited because people have been posting things in the chat. We have help of two wonderful folks, Katie and Avery, and we're going to encourage folks. Um, Katie and Avery, we're going to do some kind of uh, in the moment trans. That's my dog behind me getting the cat riled up. Uh, so we're going to do some kind of transparent in the moment facilitation. I'm thinking maybe we can read some of the questions that came through the chat before to start us off. And then um, if you, after we get through a couple of those questions, if you have a question for these brilliant folks, um, you can use the raise your hand feature, which you can see it's on like the top um, bar of your team's menu. It's got a little person uh, smiley face raising their hand. So we encourage you to use that feature um, and then to turn your camera on and get to have these, some time with these folks. So um, Katie and Avery, thank you so much for supporting for this part of the program. Um, and would you be so kind as to guide us through some of those questions in the chat? Hi, yeah, of course. Um, one of the questions that I can relate to as well, because I'm a senior, um, is asked by another senior, Catherine Skepstrom, class of 2021. And she was wondering if any of you had advice for seniors who are trying to make their way into the workforce or advice post-grad. Um, I know, Betsy, you have some experience. You talked about it graduating in 2008, but we're kind of graduating during a pandemic. So if you had any insights for us seniors, that'd be great. Yeah, I mean, I, I can kick it off a minute. Maybe it'll help for other guys. I, I, I totally get it. I can't even imagine graduating in a pandemic. I think it's probably, it, it's it's the same level, right? It's stressful. It's not a normal world. Um, we're interacting on, you know, teams versus in person. I, I think my biggest advice is really to not get discouraged and just really be open to where your path is going to go and know that your first job is not forever. It's not, you know, just because you do something that maybe you don't think you necessarily, everyone I think has this like tunnel vision, at least I did, that I had to know what I wanted to do and this is going to be my job. And and that's just not the way the workforce works now. I think a lot of us had sort of said that, um, except for Chelsea, I'm very jealous. You knew exactly what you wanted to do. Um, but, you know, it's, I, I think having that mentality, it's, it's all about really understanding that what's meant to be will be. And, you know, if you take a job and you don't like it, you can find another. If you want to change career paths and do something else, you can do that. So I, I think just having that mentality is really important, especially during COVID, um, and and it, which I get is stressful. But but try to just tell yourself that like it'll all work out, and um, patience is is a is a virtue for sure. I absolutely agree with that. I think for sure I was lucky. I knew what I wanted to do, but it doesn't mean that I kept my first job. I um, I knew I wanted something a little bit more. I knew I wanted something a little bit more academic and patience is a huge, huge word. You know, it, it might not be your forever job and that's okay. It's gonna get you experience. It's gonna give you people to network with. Um, use your network skills. Use what you've learned at school, which is be friends with people. Talk to people. Hey, do you have any job openings? Do you know anyone who has any job openings? Um, don't be afraid to network. I think it's a huge, huge asset that, you know, going into something like this in a pandemic, it's going to be hard, but use that to your advantage. Use those skills that you've learned in college. I love what you shared, Chelsea and Betsy. 
Um, I would say I would add on to that. Like I graduated in August. So like in the middle of a pandemic, it was job searching in the middle of pandemic as well. Um, so I can kind of relate. Um, and I would say, you know, my mantra the whole time is like, what is for me will not miss me. You know, what's for me will be for me. And I just like put my eggs out there. I don't use the word eggs, but you know, I just, <laughs> I apply to so many different opportunities. Like I was on LinkedIn, idealist.org, indeed.com. Like, you know, I put, you know, um, feelers out on social media and that has brought in some really cool opportunities. Like um, I've gotten to teach yoga at Brooklyn Public Library and friends who work at different higher ed institutions have reached out. So you never know. Um, but I would say just like put your net out there and, and trust that what will be for you will be for you. Even if it's just like a, like you all said, you may not, it could be just for a season, you know, but I think like um, this realm um, of employment in the pandemic can be really creative. It can be really interesting. It can be really different. And there may be new opportunities out there that maybe we didn't even think when we were students or when we first started, um, cause things are changing so much, you know, so put your net out there wide, be open and put feelers out there in your communities. I would say. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, can I, can I add on? <laughs> So yeah, I totally agree with what everyone said. And I think another piece of advice I would give is that I didn't really, I feel like as a graduating senior, like I didn't know how, like it takes a lot of time to, to apply to these jobs. Like it basically is like a part-time job to apply and research and learn about the company. And then if you get the interview, then you wanna be prepared. So like it really takes a lot of time. So I'd say, you know, spend some dedicated time and like carve out some time in your day to really focus on, you know, strengthening your resume and tailoring your resume for different positions and to put together a cover letter because all of that matter, um, you know, recruiters or HR, they, they don't spend a lot of time looking at resumes. So you want something that really captures um, someone's attention right away so i would say really it does it takes a lot of time on the front end but i think the payoff um in the long run is is um that it will pay off in the long run basically is to, is to put that the time in on the front and to utilize if there's like any like career services stuff too with you know if interview prep or you know looking at your resume or anything like that i would encourage you to to do as well can I add one more quick thing that made me inspired by what Natalie just said? Don't stress the end of your senior year. Enjoy college. Kind of back to what you guys were asking about, like your favorite UVM memory. I think one of my biggest regrets, frankly, is that my senior year, I was so obsessed with getting into the workforce and a job. And then it ended up taking me two years anyways. And then I'm looking back and I'm like, you only have four years in college. UVM is so magical. Enjoy it. You have your whole life to work you don't have your whole life to be at college. So like try to, even though it's a pandemic, really try and embrace the fact that you are seniors and like have fun and enjoy Burlington. And if you're still there, I don't know, really don't stress. You have your whole life to work. Yeah. I just want to, oh, go ahead. No, I was saying it'll, it'll work out. Yeah. yeah. I, I wanted to add, I, I echo what everyone has shared. Um, preparation is really important. Um, and as part of that too, like doing some reflecting, right? Like don't just, jump right into your job search, like think about like what you want. Um, it's important to keep an open mind and also it's okay to have boundaries and absolutes. Like I will not accept a job that does not have this thing. It's okay to be intentional about what you're seeking in your role. And so I, I invite you to do some reflection about that as well. Um, and then I would also add to like kind of to this point that Betsy shared about not getting so caught up in about getting into the workforce. Um, you're going to get a lot of time back, right? Like the time you spend studying or in your student involvement or whatever that might be. So also spend some time thinking about what you're going to do outside of the work, right? Like what are some passion projects that you've been kind of putting to the side or 
hobbies you might want to try and um, spend some time doing that as well, especially when it gets stressful or you're in that waiting period of waiting to hear back from a job. Um, you know, spend some time thinking about how you will enjoy life because you're a whole person, right? So we do spend a lot of time at work, but you want to make sure that you're finding joy and opportunities to recharge outside of it as well. Yeah, that was just so magical. We couldn't stop it. We didn't want to stop it. It was just so beautiful. Thank you so, so much. And Katie, thank you for helping us around here. I think I saw that Avery, you had raised your hand. Yeah, so Betsy talked a bit about this earlier, how she had a post-graduation interaction with the UVM alumni, um, one of her friends that helped her, you know, uh, progress her career. So we were wondering if any of you had other experiences with UVM, the UVM community post-graduation. Yeah, feel free. Please, um, anyone, if you feel compelled, um, you're welcome to answer. And also, I just want to say thank you. You all have been so incredibly passionate and compelling, and you've been sharing your story now for like over an hour. So it's okay if you need to take a breath, um, but we're really excited to listen to what people have to say to Avery's question. I can jump in a little bit. Um, I think my journey has been a, a bit unique because I was an undergrad at UVM from 2007 to 2011. And then I returned back to UVM in 2013 um, and was a professional there for six years. And while I was a professional there, I got you know connected to Sheena and the office, I believe it's the four now, the fellowships office. And that really opened the door for the grant that I got to continue um, with my master's in um, social work. So I would say um, UVM has really been deeply integrated into my professional experience. Um, and even as a staff member, just taking classes, like I learned, you know, French and, and really cool opportunities working at UVM. Um, now that I'm not there anymore, I appreciate it so much more. You know? <laughs> You know, in retrospect, you know, this community and opportunities and really like the doors that it opened um, for me. And and even, you know, when I got my job, like I reached back to mentors and they were like willing to do reference letters and recommendation letters. Um, so I would say, yeah, you definitely opened a lot of doors, even when I was a student professionally and even when I was, you know, a staff member as well. Yeah, thank you so much, Bree. Thank you so much. Yeah, who else? I This is really, you know, we're talking connection almost across like the eras here. So I, I'm really curious, did other people have that experience where other UVM people kind of reached back or you reached forward to them? Yeah, I see. Chelsea, not to call you out, but I see you nodding in a very compelling way. Do you Would you like to share? Sure. I mean, Working at the University of Vermont Medical Center has put me in touch with a lot of professors um, and even being able to, you know, assist in different classrooms has been great throughout the years that I've been there. Um, I mean, I go through pretty much every day and I see someone that I either, you know, taught or um, taught me or I went to school with. It's very rare that just because I'm still here that I don't see someone. Um, and I, I can't thank UVM enough for the experiences and all these opportunities that have, been, that have provided me going forward. It's just absolutely amazing how interconnected my life still is with UVM. Yeah, thank you so much. And thank you for having such an endearing nod. <laughs> right away that was really great um uh, yeah who else who else kind of reached back or reached forward we'd love to know um well actually through uh so it's it so i met jess um through social media and she's associated with uvm she's like i think she's still in this chat um but we have like collaborated because she makes her own jewelry um, it's really beautiful and yeah, I've kind of connected through her and then she's been like introducing me to like, uh, 
it's like UVM connects and you can see um, other alumni and learn and gain opportunities through that platform, which I'm still learning about. Um, and I still kind of want to integrate a little bit more um, into like student learning more about student really getting involved with students um, and that type of thing um, to try to give them some guidance as well. Thank you so much. And I know that the people who put kind of love and energy into making this happen, UVM Connect came up all on its own, folks. That was so beautiful, Arias. Thank you so much for signaling yeah. that support to people. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, mm -hmm. Magical Ones, we're coming up toward time. So I would love to know, um, perhaps Katie and Avery can help us out here if there are more questions from the chat or if folks are feeling inspired. We have a couple more minutes with these like incredibly brave um, and, and I feel, I just wanna thank you all for your openness, these brave and open folks. Um, so if you want to ask a question, now's the moment. Raise your hand or Avery and um, Katie, please feel free to read us things from the chat. And while people are, it's okay if there's a little bit of silence while people are waiting because you all deserve to catch your breath too. <laughs> That's totally great. Avery and Katie, do you know, do we have any um, questions in the chat that we didn't get to? I'm reading them now and I feel like we've covered all of them, which is amazing. Um, actually, Emily Salenti, who is an undergraduate here, she did ask one of the first part of her question. We already touched on asking if there was a special person in your life that helped you overcome some of the difficulties that you may have experienced during your journeys. But the second part of her question I really like, um, what are strategies that helped you through your journey? Well, that's a powerful like last kind of <laughs> chapter question. Thank you so much for, for putting that in the chat. Yeah, so once again, feel free to take a breath. Take a second if you need it, um, but we're really eager and thankful to listen to what um, any any of you all have to say. I'd love to also hear any words of wisdom you have that you know relate to those strategies. Okay, I can start off just a little bit. Um, I would say some strategies that I learned and that I really encouraged my students to when I was at UVM was that asking for help is not a weakness. You know, in fact, there's a strength, you know, to really let folks know, you know, what you need, because you never know what people, what resources that folks can pour back into you or connect you with someone who can, you know, align with you. Um, and I would say throughout my whole journey, like coming, you know, from the Bronx to Vermont and just like kind of being culture shocked, but just like there were just so many open arms, you know, that really helped guide me through my journey um, and even returning as a professional. And I think like um, asking for mentorship, like sharing and openness and, and community, like all of those times I, you know, asked for help, it was just like I was always poured into. So, you know, and I told students that too, like, I think sometimes we can say, you know, it's, it's a weakness to ask for help, but it, it is a strength for sure. Um, and I would just encourage folks to, to ask for what you need. And what? What a loving message, Brianna. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, and we're at the moment, folks. We're at the moment for your last loving messages, your strategies. And your, um, as Avery was saying, kind of your your wisdom that is um, kind of the last note we want to leave this on. So Bree, thank you, thank you for starting us off, and we're so grateful to listen to what else you all have to share. I can go next. Go oh, go ahead, Natalie. No, you go. You sure? Okay. <laughs> I was just gonna say that um, a strategy that has been really useful on my journey, both when I'm struggling and when things are going really well, is therapy. Um, and this is more recent. I've been in therapy for the past couple of years, and it has just been really transformative and um, supporting me and, and just being really a mirror reflection um, 
of some growth and healing that I need to do. So I highly recommend therapy and, and you don't need to necessarily be going through something um, negative, if you will, or challenging to seek out therapy. Like therapy can also be a space for you to just unpack your day, right? Um, and so I, I highly encourage it um, as, as an outlet and healing space. Um, I think it can be very revealing. And, and my words of wisdom would just be to like, show up as your authentic self. Don't fragment yourself. Don't feel like you can only share pieces of yourself in certain spaces. Um, just be your whole self um, in all of the spaces that you occupy um, and people will receive you. Um, and if they won't, like that's telling for you as well. Um, I think so many times we get, we get caught up in the imposter syndrome or experience and thinking that we're not enough or we don't measure up or we don't have enough to offer. Um, but your voice is valuable. Your presence is valuable. And so take up space and be yourself. Thank you so much. And Natalie, we're excited to listen to what you have to share. And then Avery, I saw that you had your hand up. So we'll, we'll get to you. Um, after that, yeah, Natalie, are, are you still open to sharing? And um, B, Veronica, thank you so much for that loving offering. Thank you so much. Yeah, mine kind of at the end, what Veronica was saying was to use your voice and to not be afraid to advocate for yourself. Um, you know, I think as women, sometimes it can be challenging and you might be afraid or you might not know the right thing to say, but I think it's something that I'm still working on and I think like a lot of us are probably still working on is to to really use our voice and to be heard um and yeah to speak up for yourself like if something's not right or you think things should be changed like I would encourage you to to speak up um if you see something whether it's an injustice or whether you know something personal in your relationships at work like I think that's something like a kind of a lesson that I've tried to take with me throughout all of my different experiences so thank you so much for that what a, I mean I feel like that message is always overdue and always on time um so thank you so 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 much uh and Avery yeah I'd love to know what you were raising your hand about if you want to share um I just want to say I'm super grateful for having all of you here and um Natalie is actually from my hometown of Milwaukee so it's really cool to hear um words from another alumni that's you know, from where I'm from, I'm the first person from my high school to come here. And so it's, it feels like a really cool thing to hear her success as well as all the others. Thank you. What a beautiful note of gratitude. So, um, beloved, uh, folks, we have like two minutes. Um, you all have so much to share. So we're going to let you all honor, um, I'm curious who of you, because I'm sure it's at least one of you, have like a blossoming thing, like one th more thing that you would really love to put into the 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 room. Um, everything that's been shared has been so sacred and meaningful, at least for me, and I, I know for folks who are listening. So now is your moment. Um, we've had, everyone has had a lot of time to share. So um, I wouldn't worry about taking space away from anyone else at this moment, but really just embrace if you're feeling drawn to it, Now's the moment, folks. Um, we'll give a little bit of silence to see who wants to do it, but um, I'm so excited to listen to what you have to share. Yeah, I, I can share something. I, I just think um, no matter what your career is, if you if you get a higher degree, if you get your dream job, I think the most important thing is to follow your heart. Um, and really try to figure out who you are as a person and what's important to you. Um, Cause then you can use that as a tool to um, align that with your life and your job. Um, I feel like COVID has kind of opened my eyes to who I am, what I wanna be spending my time doing um, and uh, without it, I feel like I wouldn't be at the place where I am. So I guess COVID's kind of, but it, there was a positive. Um, but yeah, just take take some time too, like to figure out who you are and what's important to you and reading and healing and journaling and seeing. I like to journal and see like what I thought two years ago to see, 
you know, oh, I did this goal. I would like write my goals down from like two years ago and be like, oh, I did that and that and that and that. And like things are actually going great. And I like had no idea when you like compare. Um, so yeah, just just keep pushing and yeah, life's a I I think the saying is life's a journey. It's about the journey, not the destination. Um, so really do and try to enjoy the journey to um, kind of putting it into the bigger picture here. But yeah, that's that that's those are my last those those are my last words. What a beautiful closing offering. Um, each of you, thank you for being so brave. I'm going to offer it to Caitlin. And um, before I do that, I just want to say that your presence um, is inspiring. And the way that you were able to be present on this night um, after you all had days. Um, thank you. Thank you. And now, Caitlin, I lovingly offer it to you to kind of close us out. Thank you. And thank you, all of our lovely panelists, Arielis, Brianna, Ria, uh, Veronica, Chelsea, Natalie, and Betsy um, for being here. And thank you for everybody um, who registered and who is here watching and um, who put questions in the chat. Um, I appreciate all of you and I am so grateful um, to have thrown um, a a beautiful panel um, like this one. Um, so again, if you want to get more involved um, with SAA, please do not hesitate to reach out um, through our social media, which is U at UVM SAA. Um, and I also just want to thank the Wage Center um, for partnering with SAA tonight as well. Um, as shared earlier, Arialis pointed out UVM Connect. Um, we put a list of, um, of amazing um, women alum from UVM who are willing to help um, with anything, with um, whether that be mentorship or any advice. Um, and that PDF is in the chat, um, so you can always go back to that. Um, but yeah, um, thank you again. I'm going to send it back to uh, Katerina and yeah. Yeah, I'm going to sleep well tonight, folks. I tell you what, um, thank you so much. And I'm here to just say thank you on behalf of the Women and Gender Equity Center and to say that being connected with you has been a pleasure, a privilege, and it doesn't have to stop here. So if you want to stay connected to us, our work, and our connections with community, um, some great ways to do that are to follow us on Instagram. So that's just at UVM Wage Center. Um, you'll see all of our program offerings and some opportunities to connect with one another yeah. through there. Um, and I also invite you to see our website. Um, you'll see my picture as well as the pictures of our team. And we do this work because we love to meet fabulous people. So you are always welcome to reach out to us. You're always welcome to reach out to me. Um, spaces like this are why we are so thrilled to get to be who we are and do what we do. So thank you all for being who you are and doing what you do. And now I have the pleasure of saying good night. Um, thank you. And I hope that you hold yourselves sacred um, because you're all pretty cool. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm blessed to be here. <laughs> thank, thank you. Everyone. Thanks, everyone. Nice to meet everybody. Thank you.